Welcome back, friends. I'm Michelle Snyder, and we are starting up our fall session of Bible study. And this session, we're working on the book of Ruth. And oh my goodness, it is packed full of so much good stuff, and I can't wait to get started. This account begins in the closing days of the Judges, and it was a 400-year period of general anarchy and oppression uh, when the Israelites were not ruled by kings, but by periodic deliverers whom God raised up when the nation sought him again. Oh, don't you want to be a deliverer? Don't you want to be the person God uses to, to raise up, maybe not a nation, but to raise up people? He has a purpose for us, and we can learn so much by the parallel between what happened with Naomi and Ruth and what happens with us in our own lives. Bethlehem was a rich agricultural area, and the name actually means house of bread. However, times were tough. So Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, went to the pagan land of Moab. He had to hike through the desolate Jericho Pass, through the Judean wilderness near the Dead Sea, across the Jordan River, into the land of Moab. And this was a definite departure from the promised land of Israel and a return towards the wilderness from which God had delivered them uh, hundreds of years before. So these were clearly steps in the wrong direction. So they didn't plan to be away for very long. However, Elimelech got sick, and 10 years later, his two sons got sick, and um, that was basically the end of that family. It left three childless widows to fend for themselves. And so we're going to pick up in Ruth 1, 6, verses 6 through 7, says, Then she, which it's referring to Naomi, arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had revisited his people by giving them bread. Therefore she went out from the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her. And Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go return each to your mother's home. In other words, just go ahead. I'm going to release you. I know this is your home. Why don't you stay here? Um, and by all common sense, this was a wise thing to do. Orpah and Ruth had strong family ties in Moab, and uh, str much stronger than they had with Naomi. And she said to them, The Lord grant that you may find rest. With these words, Naomi freely blessed them and prayed that they would one day remarry. The weeping, though, of these two girls shows evidence of the strong relationship that they had with their mother-in-law. What a blessing that is. Uh, verses 10 and 13 go on and uh, talk about what the girls said in response to this. Surely we will return with you to your people. They objected. But Naomi said, turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there still sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? According to the laws of ancient Israel, if a young woman was left widowed without having had a son, then one of her deceased husband's brothers was responsible for bringing a surrogate father and providing her with a son. She felt that the calamity which had befallen her family was partly due to her disobedience, probably in leaving the promised land in the first place, and then in marrying her sons off to these uh, Moabite women. Despite this feeling, though, Naomi is going back to the land of Israel and going back to her God. She returned to him in repentance, knowing that the answer was in drawing closer to him, not in moving further away. She didn't accuse God of doing something against her. Um, she acknowledged his total control over all of her circumstances. What Naomi couldn't see, though, is that the hand of the Lord would go out for her, not against her. There is never a reason for us to despair. 
if we believe that God's hand has gone out against us. If we will return to him, ladies, he is like the father of the prodigal son. His hand will go out for us. Naomi had no idea, not even the slightest, of how greatly God was going to bless her in just a short time. Two. So her two daughters-in-law lifted up their voices in protest and wept again. Both Orpah and Ruth felt deeply. They both loved Naomi. They were both anxious about their future. But a choice had to be made. Do you know we all have to make that choice? God reaches down to us. He extends his arms. He offers the free gift of his son. And what are we going to do when we're given that choice? Are you going to receive this gift or not? And Ruth reached out and received that gift. She took action. She followed her mother-in-law. Whereas Orpah decided to turn around and go back to her own family. Some of us are content with feelings of love for God, with feelings of love for his word, and with feelings of love for his people. But what will you do with those feelings? Sometimes it comes right down to the doing all right, we are so glad that God just didn't feel his love for us. Instead, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3, 16. Oh, ladies, he gave. He is a God who gives. He is a God who does something with the love that he feels. Look at your sister-in-law. She's gone back to her people and her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. Naomi was, was releasing Ruth. She was holding her with an open palm. And Ruth continued to um, say no. And that's where she said these infamous words, Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. This was more than a change of address. Ruth was willing to forsake the Moabite gods that she had grown up with and to embrace the God of Israel. And we're so glad she did, and we'll find out more later, but she was deciding to follow the Lord. This Gentile woman who had once been far away had now drawn near to him. And, oh, you know what? We've all been far away from him. And we can make that decision, that choice. You can make it right now to turn a 180 and go right back to the roots from where you came. And I love how Naomi's uh, commitment and her trust and her faith in the Lord it, during this hard time is what attracted Ruth to the God of Israel. People should be able to look at our lives just as Ruth looked at Naomi's and say, I want your God to be my God. Your trust in God and turning toward him through rough times, ladies, will often be the thing that draws others to him. Ten years of living with Naomi and seeing her compromise in Moab never made Ruth decide to make a commitment of her allegiance to the God of Israel. Yet as soon as Naomi stood and said, I am going back to the God of Israel, I'll put my fate in his hands. As soon as she said that, Ruth stood with her. So if you think you're going to persuade your friends or relatives to Jesus by your compromise, guess what? You're sadly mistaken. Only a bold stand for Jesus will really do it. Ruth had very little knowledge of the one true God, the God of Israel, but she knew that he was a God of fairness and justice. We can imagine how along the way Naomi might have been filling Ruth in on all the stories of this God that she loved and worshipped. 
So here Naomi is going back to uh, her homeland and she wasn't a phony about it. She wasn't going to go home and pretend that everything was fine. And she wasn't going to go home and be pleasant. She was going to be honest and say, here I am. And my life has been bitter. Naomi was not afraid to see this, the hand of God in all her calamity. She knew that the tragedy that came into her life was not because of fate, not because of chance, not because of blind fortune. She knew there was a sovereign God of heaven. So here in Ruth 1, uh, verses 19 through 21, it says, Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. So they had arrived in Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. So apparently they remembered Naomi. And the women said when they saw her, Is this Naomi? Meaning pleasant. But Naomi said to them, Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi, since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me? She is apparently just completely guilt-ridden, and I think we've all been there. Um, but yet she knew that the loving hand of God would always welcome her back. We can imagine along the way that Ruth could have been asking all about this God that she had decided to follow. Naomi wasn't being a phony. She wasn't going to go home and pretend everything was fine, pretend that she was still pleasant. She was going to be honest and say, Here I am. Here's my life. It's been bitter. Yet in the midst of all her bitter circumstances, Naomi was not bitter against the Lord. We can imagine one of the villagers asking, Naomi, if God has dealt bitterly with you, uh, if the Lord has brought you home empty, if the Lord has testified against you, then why have you even come back? And she would have said, because I want to get right with him. I know that terrible things have happened and I also know that the answer isn't in moving further away from him, but in moving closer to him. Well, not everyone reacts the way Naomi did, but it's a good lesson to us. Naomi had come back repentant. She had come back honest. She had felt that the Almighty had afflicted her indeed. But in the coming chapters, it'll be shown that this God, this one true God, the God of Israel, is about to bless her, if only she could see it. It would have been easy for Naomi to focus on what she had lost. She had lost a husband, she had lost two sons, and one daughter-in-law. She had lost all kinds of material possessions. All she had left was one little daughter-in-law named Ruth. But through that one thing, God was going to bring unbelievable blessing into her life and into ours. All the good things that happen in the future chapters begin right here with Ruth. With Naomi's godly repentance and return to Israel, it will make a difference not only in her life, but in the life of her daughter-in-law, Ruth, and in the destiny of the nation of Israel and in your eternal salvation. It's possible for God to accomplish amazing things, um, both for now and in eternity, if we will turn towards Him today, not only in our feelings, but also in our actions. So that was our study of Ruth chapter 1. I'm so glad you joined us. I can't wait to see what happens next. Um, let's meet again next week for chapter 2. And let's see what the God of heaven does to restore the lives, to restore the years the swarming locust has eaten for this dear sweet lady named Naomi. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.